Is the resurrection of Christ an article of our faith or a historical fact? This makes all the difference because, as St. Paul says, our faith would be vain if Christ had not risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria, and welcome back to this Sunday's Gospel Commentary. The Gospel for the third Sunday of Easter relates one of Christ's um, post-resurrection apparitions to the Apostles. It is a Gospel that is all about the very, very important virtue of faith. The Gospel today is from St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 35 to 48, and presents us with two disciples who are telling the Apostles what had just happened on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about all this, all of a sudden, Jesus stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, the two disciples mentioned here are the disciples who were on their way to Emmaus when Jesus, after his resurrection, um, appeared to them. Um, I am sure you all remember that when he broke the bread with them, uh, they then received a grace. They received a grace and perceived that they were in the presence of the risen Lord. The um, disciples of Emmaus um, were telling the other disciples about all of this when all of a sudden Jesus appeared again, this time in their midst. Jesus, the Lord, wanted to set their minds at rest and so said to them, Peace be with you. But the reaction of the disciples um, is quite surprising here in the Gospel. Um, because instead of rejoicing and, uh, and being happy at seeing the Master, the Lord, uh, today's Gospel says that, that they um, were startled and terrified and, th though, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Now, why is this? If we were to look at it from a purely human perspective, it would make sense that they were startled and terrified, yes. Because, well, never had someone come back to life from the dead by himself. Jesus himself had resurrected others like Lazarus, um, Jairus' daughter, of, of course. But it's one thing to resurrect someone else, well, a great miracle, no doubt. It's something totally different to resurrect himself, to come back from the dead after having promised to do so. Only, only the God-man could do such a thing. Besides, Jesus had entered the house with the doors closed. That's the kind of thing one would expect a ghost or a spirit to do. So, the fear came from the fact that they thought that they were seeing a ghost. Uh, but if we look at this episode, brothers and sisters, from the perspective of faith, we see that the disciples were completely lacking faith. They had no excuse for not believing the resurrection of the Lord. Jesus had foretold that he would die and resurrect from the dead, not once, but thrice. He had foretold everything that eventually eventually happened. In fact, in his last trip to Jerusalem, where the Lord was crucified, he had foretold that he would be, that he would be caught, that he would be mocked, that he would be scourged, and that he would be crucified, and that he would rise, he would resurrect on the third day. The disciples knew all this. They knew Jesus well enough to be sure that he meant what he said. He had proved his divinity with so many miracles. Then, then why did they not believe? 
St. Mary Magdalene had seen Jesus resurrected, and so had the other holy women. These women had already told the apostles about the resurrection. So, what Jesus said had already been confirmed by them. Then, then we, we hear about the two disciples of Emmaus. They had, already, they had also seen the risen Lord, and they were telling the apostles all about it. After all this, the apostles still didn't believe. Now, why did the apostles not believe? Well, well, let's see what happens next. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. So, brothers and sisters, we see here how Jesus kind of, well, went out of his way to prove that he was real and that he had truly resurrected. So, in this way, the Lord was strengthening the faith of the apostles so they could, so they could afterwards pass on this faith to, to the future generations. So, the Lord made them touch and feel his wounds to show, that, to show that he was not a ghost. He ate with them to show that it was truly him. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So, brothers and sisters, here we see that the Lord opened their minds to understand Holy Scripture. This means that He granted them the gift of faith, the gift of faith that they were lacking at that moment. The apostles did not believe in the resurrection, well, for the same reason that people throughout history, until today, still refuse to believe in miracles. Even if we see a miracle happening before our eyes, if we are not, if we are not aided by the supernatural gift of faith, we will seek um, every explanation possible except the obvious one, that we are faced with a true miracle. Um, that reminds me of, of an infamous anti-clerical French writer called Émile Zola. This, um, this writer once went to Lourdes and studied and interviewed many of those who received miraculous cures there from Our Lady. So Zola went and met the doctors, the patients, the priests. There was no way he could question the evidence that was put before him. But, but he later wrote a book against the apparitions of Lourdes, lying about what he saw and trying to ridiculize and explain everything as being false. Fortunately, the priest who received and accompanied him in Lourdes uh, afterwards published another account explaining the truth of Zola's visit in Lourdes. Zola simply said that even if he saw all the sick at Lourdes being healed and cured, he would still not believe in the miracles of Lourdes. 
And so this reminds me of a quote from this time, a famous and beautiful novel called The Song of Bernadette by Franz Werfel. He says, For those who believe, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe, no explanation is possible. So this brings us to the conclusion, brothers and sisters, that faith is a gift and is found in the heart. If we resist God's grace, we will not believe in God, even, even the, in the face of marvelous miracles. Faith is a gift of God, but we are free creatures and we can refuse or accept this gift. This is perhaps because well, to believe in Jesus and to believe in his resurrection means that, well, we must live our lives according to his teachings. The belief in the resurrection is something too big to be indifferent in front of it. Belief in the resurrection implies conversion of our lives. That's perhaps the reason, brothers and sisters, well, so many people reject the resurrection. Faith is the greatest of God's gifts, and if it can grow, um, it, it, we, are, we are blessed, and we can make it grow by practicing it. We should always make acts of faith and make our faith a living faith. Every time we make an act of faith, for instance, um, when in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, saying to Jesus that we truly love and we believe Him in, his, in, in the Eucharistic presence, our, our faith increases. Our faith uh, also grows with the graces we receive in, when we receive the, the sacraments, so especially the Eucharist and confession. Our faith also grows through, through prayer, especially the Holy Rosary. It is important to always ask um, that we may, and pray, that we may grow in our faith. But, but brothers and sisters, that's not enough. It's not sufficient to grow. We have to live our faith. This means that we should analyze everything in our life from the perspective of the Catholic faith. When we hear something strange or extraordinary or bizarre that is happening around us, we should ask ourselves if it is, in, if it is um, compatible with the faith of the Church. If not, we should reject it no matter what. Our faith in God's revelation is much more certain um, than anything scientists or intellectuals or anyone can tell us. When we see something that offends our faith, that offends the Catholic faith, the Catholic Church, like a crime or, or a sin or, or a television program or a movie or, or a novel, like the one Emile Zola wrote against the apparitions of Lourdes, in which in which the Catholic faith is ridiculized or denied implicitly, we should make acts of faith and reparation and reject what is being said against our faith. In many such ways, we make our faith a living faith. Faith will only grow, brothers and sisters, if we practice it. So, let's thank Our Lady for the gift of our faith and ask her, to always help us grow in faith. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria, and a blessed Sunday to you.